Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is August 10th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm gonna provide you guys with a weather, climate, and climate change analysis of the Arctic, which I do every week on Friday. But before I do, I'd like to answer this question from Sophos, who is uh, one of the commenters on the page uh, asking, is it raining at the North Pole today? Thanks for the question, Sophos. Um, actually, you probably already knew this. It might have been a rhetorical question, but yes, it is raining at the North Pole or very close to nor the North Pole today, according to this GFS climate model. Now, how unusual is it for rain to fall at the North Pole during summer? And in all honesty, it's, it's not super unusual. The average temperature at the North Pole during this time of year is just ever so slightly above the freezing line. So it's, it's possible to see rain this time of year under past climatological averages, at least if you're looking at the 1958 to 2002 mean line which arguably is, is, is a bit warmer than, than the 19th century mean line. But it's also worth noting that temperatures in the high Arctic, and this is in the 80 degree north latitude line region and toward the North Pole, are warmer than normal today and have been trending that way for at least a week. Now, looking at Arctic sea ice extent, which is something we look at every week here. Presently, extent is fifth, fifth lowest on record and has been tracking in that range for about a week now. Would like to note that the present sea ice extent in the Arctic of 5.74 million square kilometers is approximately two and a half million square kilometers below the 1980s line. So showing a serious departure below historical values, but not in striking distance at present of record low ranges. And the record low for the to date was in 2012 at 5.04 million square kilometers. So we're about 700,000 square kilometers above that. It would take some really serious events in the Arctic to knock us down to the 2012 trend line and as time goes by it becomes less and less likely that that will happen however there are some interesting features in the arctic that i would like to point out to you and one feature is that this sea ice in the east siberian sea region and moving into the beaufort sea is is very thin and very diffuse i just want you to Keep that in mind as I, I go through this analysis, because what we're looking at is the potential. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to air temperatures here in the Arctic. So bear with me for just one second. So as you can see, temperatures are slight, presently slightly below freezing in sections of the Beaufort Sea but maintain above freezing for much of the Arctic, particularly on the Beaufort side and in this large and expanding zone near the Laptev Sea where we see some rather extraordinarily warm temperatures. But I'm just gonna go ahead and advance this to next week and notice this section of Siberia here, which flares with, with some rather extreme temperatures in through Monday, and then this shifts east a bit, and we get this warm air invasion of the East Siberian Sea by Wednesday. So you can see this warmth, which appears to shift from the Atlantic and, and uh, Barents seaside to the Laptev seaside, and, and this will, will tend to hit that diffuse ice that I showed to you earlier rather hard. 
So looking at anomalies, the, these anomalies are, are, are pretty intense for this time of year, predicted anomalies. Note that the anomalies over the LAPTEV C range from about 5 to as much as 10 to 12 degrees Celsius above average. This is over an ocean zone. That's really, really warm departure for summertime. And bleeding out well into the high Arctic here with 2 to 5 degrees Celsius above normal temperatures for the East Siberian Sea in, in this region where we see very diffuse ice. Looking at the satellite map for today, we can also see this highly diffuse ice section in the East Siberian Sea. So, so, so given these weather patterns and the predicted weather patterns, if they emerge as, as predicted, it does look like this region could see a relatively rapid loss of ice, which would tend to, if it does emerge, knock the ice down a peg or two. So, so not something that we're looking at with regards to threatening new record lows, daily record lows into as we get into middle August, but certainly something to watch with regards to speeding ice melt. I'd also like to just call your attention to the overall long-term trend. And now this is not, not a prediction. Um, I'm looking at the Arctic sea ice graphs page, which is provided by Nevin, a very good resource for those who wish to keep an eye on Arctic sea ice trends. So if you're looking at the present trend, it appears that, that based on historical ice losses through to, through to early to mid-September, it looks like we're tracking toward about 4.2 or 4.3 million square kilometers of, of sea ice extent by the end of melt season, which would put us in the probably, probably close to the average range for the decade of the 2010s if we continue on the historic path. And note that the, the low accessions now on the historical trend map are above the record low line, which makes it a lot less likely that we're gonna see a new record low this summer. But as with anything related to human-caused climate change, and the Arctic is one of the regions that's being most heavily impacted by human-caused climate change, surprises can occur. So this is one of the reasons why we monitor the Arctic continuously. Now there's one more feature that I'd like to add. We've got some time here that is starting to look a bit more concerning. And I just want to note the intensity of wildfires burning in far northern regions, particularly over this permafrost, dense permafrost zone in Siberia, which, which are becoming quite active. Uh, we've, we've had this, this fade and flare, but, but at this point, it's, it's, it's looking, looking rather active. So as these temperatures increase, are predicted to increase over the coming days and shift east, we want to look at wildfires. So we, we might see an expansion of wildfires on the Siberian side. Also, I'd like to call your attention to what appear to be a number of severe wildfires flaring through British Columbia. This is a quite intense signal. And note the extraordinary smoke plume. This smoke plume is also associated with wildfires burning throughout parts of California and through the American West. But these wildfires are starting to extend up into Canada with quite a bit of intensity. We've had some strong wildfires in Ontario. This spate of wildfires through British Columbia is, is looking rather serious at this time. So. So something to keep an eye on, intense northern wildfires in, in, in August are, are something that, that we should watch because, well, we would tend to see August wildfire activities start to, to, to fade, especially as we get into September. So, so we need to keep an eye on this. So an overall overview of the Arctic, thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.